when I think about adventure and I think about fly fishing adventure, um, the places that I want to go tick boxes. You know, I want it to be one and adventure. It needs to be someplace awesome. It needs to be chasing really, really cool fish on fly. And I think the journey and, and, and where it is plays a massive role in that. Um, and then of course there's that wild element, the wild fish, the wild location and Tierra del Fuego uh, fishing on the Rio Grande with the team from Villa Maria uh, takes all those boxes. Maria Lodge uh, is a six rods operation and um, there are three guides so uh, each guide is going to be guiding two guests along the week. During the fishing week, six days fishing week, um, you are going to fish each bit twice, once in the morning, once in the evening so you can try different fishing conditions. That means that we have six bits. In a normal day you, you are going to fish two sessions, uh, one in the morning and then at lunch, we're going to make a break. We're going to go to a day house we have along the, next to the river there, so you can view, overview the, the river. And you're going to have a grill. The chef is there, so you're going to have a nice lunch. Then you have time to take a rest and go forward for the evening session because we are fishing all the way till the sun sets. Uh, usually it's a very good time. Uh, brown trout, you know, they are a little shy. And so with a low light, uh, conditions, the fishing is, is a little more attractive, at least for me. I brought the sea trout in the early 1900s. Um, they, they put them in Chile, in the headwater of this river. Um, as the river is uh, very poor in food for them, they started going down, downstream looking for, for food until they found the sea. Plenty of food, uh, shrimp, fish, and they grow they very very big and uh, then they start they came back to the river to spawn and that's how they, they started at the beginning they were regular browns from England here uh, we fish mostly with uh, spay rods because of the size of the river and the wind but uh, in a count day you can fish single hand rods easily apart from the green machine which is probably one of the most famous flies uh, we use also different kind of nymphs with rubber legs, without, uh, weighted and weighted. At the end of the day, when the sun goes down and it gets darker, we use uh, leeches. Well, I, I love this fish because uh, they are very unpredictable. Some, sometimes you, you can catch them with a green machine and then the, you release the fish and then they don't keep fishing, they don't take, you have to change the fly, change the line. They are moody. And another, well, the, uh, maybe the most important uh, issue for me is the, the size of the fish. They can be really big. 
it's, not, it's very normal here to hook a 15 pound fish or a 20 pound sea trout. And uh, if you're lucky, you can hook a monster over 30 pounds. It's not uncommon. We had a mild introduction initially. We thought, well, the breeze is not that bad. Everyone talks about um, the breath of God and the strong winds that pumps through this river in the Rio Grande, specifically on the tip here. And we thought, well, we've got spay rods, which we still need to learn how to actually cast them. Uh, we've got eight weights and nine weights, so surely this wind uh, won't be that bad. Uh, yeah, we were wrong. The wind here doesn't blow, it pumps. Um, it's like a jet engine that comes down the valley. The only thing that keeps you going, I guess, would be the fact that there are these massive brown trout that run out of the ocean up the Rio Grande and every now and then oblige by taking your flies. Getting them to take your flies is just, that's just the first part of actually catching one because that's just your ticket to the game and that's where the fight actually starts. Once you hook one of these, these beasts, they just I mean, they just abolish everything you know about brown trout. They are chrome, they are silver, they're strong, they run like sea fish. The last couple of days have actually been, the ratio of landed fish versus hooked fish hasn't been that great because we've hooked in one session probably 15 fish of which we've only landed five simply because we can't turn them or they just dog fighters and they take you under the bank. Oh! But hey, the fish are big, the fish are wild, the terrain is, uh, is equally so and you do whatever to catch another one of these awesome, awesome, massive browns. While you're walking on the banks and you're trying to mend and trying to get your line through the wind, close to the bank, into the current, and you follow it through, just feeling the tension slowly, just bobbing your flies in the current, and then any tap or any resistance, you kind of set up. It's taught us that maybe we should be going out in these conditions back home, maybe you should endure them more, but Villa Maria, Rio Grande, Tierra del Fugo is a place that tests you from the start, from day one and um, requires you to endure the elements but if you do so you'll be rewarded and they're not unsurmountable, definitely not. If these fish are anywhere near your radar then you know the team at Nervous Waters and Villa Maria has to be has to be uh, a place that you come visit. There's no question, no question. Um, and I'll definitely be back. Definitely, it's totally worth it.